Hey there, this is Ryan Kingsling, founder of ZBrush Workshops and the brand new CreatureWorkshops.com with a little tip about DynaMesh. Now, I've gotten a lot of questions about DynaMesh. What is it? Uh, what is it useful for? What are the advantages of it? And then one particularly that I think kind of sums up the dilemma people have understanding it. Isn't it just like Remesh? Now you'll remember Remesh is new in ZBrush 4 and Remesh allows you to simply uh, redo the topology from one subtool all the way down and just combine them in to one model. So in a sense, DynaMesh is like that because what it is doing is integrating everything and redoing the topology along this kind of remesh like algorithm where everything is just simple quads with a couple of extraordinary vertices as form starts to rotate through the square or through the sphere sorry the cube you can imagine it like this think of lego blocks one 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 and then they just have to kind of smooth out right where and that leaves extraordinary vertices along these points you know that's kind of what it's doing it's a voxel based option and dynamesh has an advancement over the remesh algorithm um, but the primary advancement is that it happens instantly if you want to uh, pull out a surface okay you're not having to remesh go to select it reproject details you're getting all of that done at once so for example let's say we want to pull out some form out of the shoulder okay we've used snake hook and then the polygons have essentially stretched beyond usability control click and drag to remesh it and they are now a hundred percent usable you can smooth it out do what you want from there now that's not the only thing because you can literally combine parts and pieces so if we say turn on rotate use a topological mask just to mask out that arm then I can come into draw use snake hook and literally pull this back into the arm pull it back into the arm and even adjust the form a little bit let's just fix that back my snake hook brush was large inflate this remesh it and now that's integrated directly into the topology it's not separate it's integrated so that means I can be sculpting them as though they're one object yes remesh could do some of that but it couldn't do it as successfully because the way things were broken up where you had to remesh you had to reproject and then you had you know all these separate systems DynaMesh has rolled them all into one and all you really need to do there are other settings but all you need to do is just have DynaMesh on control click and drag and it remeshes everything so there's another way or another place where this is really a valuable thing and where DynaMesh as a system is much more awesome uh, uh, much more obvious and much more awesome keep in mind DynaMesh is a system you want to think about it as though it's a system not as though it's just one new feature no it is a system that liberates you and by liberate I mean you can just cut and paste and uh, copy things in and all of it happens really fast so fast that you are now uh, thumbnailing in ZBrush is what I call it you're in there concept designing incredibly fast remesh would have been a technical procedure would have slowed you down but now let's take for example clothing or a flowing cape if you've ever sculpted a flowing cape you know that well it can be slightly problematic it's hard to get all the undulations it takes time to sculpt the folds all of that stuff it takes time to sculpt all the folds and so what that means is that you you more committed to your final result well these guys these different capes this one here and uh, let's bring in the other one these are all done in a matter of minutes so I'm not committed to any one of these guys they're just done real quick I'm trying to find the energy and I'm working exactly like a traditional sculptor a traditional sculptor will have a piece 
you know, some sort of general piece of clay there, and then they'll come in and they'll lay down strips of clay that they then integrate in to the rest. They might add in smaller strips for, you know, lesser movements, and, uh, and then just again, melt it all, merge it all with their thumb, uh, things of that nature. And they'll get these things done super fast, faster than you would have in ZBrush before, except for now. Now, this is very simple. And this is a great way to get a sense of the Dynamesh system. So, we're in Dynamesh, and I'm going to come in and I'm going to select Curve Tube. Okay, and I'm going to go into the Stroke Palette, and this is where all of these settings exist. So, by default, all of these settings should look a little bit like that. You'll have Curve Mode on, Bend probably on, Intensity on. Okay. And then let's let's leave that somewhere around default. Okay. And now you just come in, draw out a line, and it adds clay. It adds a strip of clay, so to speak. There's a couple of variables I'm going to walk you through so that you get the results we're talking about. But I can literally come in now and just add strips of clay that would basically stick to the model. And all these strips of clay, well at least the last one, is editable. So I can say adjust my draw size, click the curve point, makes it smaller. I can then move points, you know, things like that. But that's not, that's just the beginning of this. Let's undo this and let me walk you through a couple of the features that you're going to want to use when doing this. One of them is you're going to want snap on. If you turn snap on, then as you draw on the model, your curve is going to conform to the surface of the model. Pretty cool. So now you literally have a piece of clay, a little strip on your cape that you can merge. Okay, but we're not done there yet. Let's just undo that. And now I'm going to turn size on. So I've got bend, snap, and size. And so now I'm going to draw a line. And then notice that it is tapering as it goes down the stroke. The amount of taper is decided by curve fall off. Okay, and curve fall off, well, we won't be able to do it with screen capture, but we can adjust the minimum size. Let's say set it about here. And then draw that on. And then this bottom portion is going to be uh, less tapered than the top, uh, less tapered than it was before. So these are the basic settings that I would use. But one of the cool things about this whole system is that these strokes are editable. That's the amazing part. So you got two different modes when you're here. You can see my cursor is red right now. Red cursor means I'm in sculpt mode and uh, you know I'm doing different sculpting behaviors. As soon as I go over the curve, it's blue. Cool, get in there, I can adjust this make it flow, but I'm not sure if you noticed what happens, but notice that my position for the tapering has changed based on where I clicked. So I could come in and get entirely different results. I just come in and say click the top right there. And now let's say I don't want that, let's say I want to click the bottom. Now my tapering is coming from the bottom up to the top. I could even adjust the fall off and do the exact same thing. Something like that. Now I'm getting much more tapering. So you, get, you can choose the direction that you want here. I'm going to leave it kind of at this default. And uh, let's just go in and start to add some dynamic qualities. We may want to use snake hook to kind of adjust the overall shape give this a little bit more of one particular directionality and then back into that curve tubes okay my settings are all the same I'm gonna lower my draw size so I'm gonna run 20 and then start to draw out the stroke okay come in and add another one I'm gonna go the other direction so that I get a, a bit more volume there. And then uh, let's 
take our draw size smaller, add some secondary concerns, and then uh, in this one I'm going to click the center so that the uh, concerns are kind of the curvatures right along the middle. Okay, and then again, and I'm going to click the center. Yeah, like that. So, one more I think is fair, and this one I'm going to go a little larger, and I'm going to click the center. That's too large, so I'm going to lower my draw size and click it. But it's going to push it out a bit, so I'm going to go into bend. I'm going to turn bend off and then just move it back in. You may want to turn snap off too, actually. I'm going to undo before that and just push back in. So it's a little hunk of clay. I'm able to adjust its orientation and just kind of push it in. There we go. Let's start about there. All right. So I got a bunch of strips of clay hanging out on the model. That is pretty awesome. So I'm going to clear the mask, and then I'm going to control, click, and drag. But they're all separate. In this particular case, I now want these guys to all be one object. So I'm going to turn group off. I'm going to remesh it. Now they're all combined. So that's fine. That's great. Now I need to make a few adjustments. One of them is I need to integrate these guys. This is a separate piece. So you can integrate it by inflating them into each other. It's a fine way to do it. And then you know you smooth out a little bit. They're integrated. Um, that looks fine. I might integrate this a little bit. Yes. Okay. Anything else sticking out? No. Remesh it. It recalibrates and the separation between them is gone. Now when you're doing this, because your density is kind of high, you may want to go into brush folder and then into the smooth directory and you want to select the smooth stronger brush. Smooth stronger. So I've already loaded it and now I'm going to just smooth this out. Okay, now we're just focusing on a little bit of directionality, a little bit of energy. So you can decide how much and how far you want to take this from here. You can use the same brushes, the clay brush, all of that to integrate these guys. You can use the inflate brush, press alt to push in and get this curvature going can always be remeshing and recalibrating. Okay, Careful of the back side. You may want to turn display properties double on. Okay, And then, of course, it's relatively easy to solve that. Just control, click, and drag. Move, move it in. Move it in. Recalibrate. Areas like this where it gets noisy, I just inflate them. So we've got the ability to go in here and really quickly create some energy that would have been much harder to do uh, using the other tools. And uh, we're not committed. It all happened in front of you in the span of like five minutes, I think. And so we've got all these other ones that, that we could do and, and just experiment and play and kind of see what ends up really working for us. But the key to it is that DynaMesh is allowing us to freely go in, create, recalibrate, create, recalibrate, and uh, shorten the technical processing side so that you're literally designing in clay faster than you've done ever before. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. Check us out at uh, ZBrush Workshops. We have a new monthly subscription option, so check that out. and. Um, and uh, good luck with your sculpting.